at this one more time. Take note of the node. Let's look at this node differently. If this is embedded, it's con the adjustment is done at the far end. If this is similar to all these other nodes in reverse order, there's only one adjustment done at the top, and it will be on the lower tension side of the uh, uh, diagonal. As we go here, let me zoom out a little bit for you guys. Take note of this tooling here, jackhammer, uh, hydraulic storage box it appears. Maybe that's the adjuster. That's the, uh, the ram. Look at all of this extension of this rod. This, I'm not sure this sizing and this sizing doesn't look the same, but this would look like it was the uh, a greased rod, if you will. All right, take note of this. This is sticking way out above the uh, top of this node. And I don't know about you, but I don't recall seeing any of this and any of the uh, previous videos, transporting, etc., this much available space. As you see the jackhammer down here, it's on top of the rubble, and I don't recall any crews coming out trying to use a mini jackhammer after the fact. So we're going we're gonna to assume this jackhammer was on this bridge and it bounced over to here. Now everyone's talking about this crane thing too, that the crane was there and it had a uh, spacer bar holding up the bridge. All right, I'm, that one's just annoying me to no end also. Do you see a space bar anywhere? You know, the, the, the crane was not holding up the bridge. It was for this tooling, if anything. It wasn't holding up a person. This is the, uh, the uh, lanyard that's holding up the person right here. It goes from one side of the bridge to the other so they can walk the entire length. Um, if you search images, you'll see somebody post them, their relative on the bridge at the far end. They uh, appears to be the, the uh, south end. I don't know. Moving back to this. This has obviously been had at it, in my opinion, I have to say that, had at it with this tool and had at it again. With that said, uh, they said that the NTSB has stated that they were they were post-tensioning, finished post-tensioning one, was working on the second one. So if that's the case, they had it, this guy, they post-tensioned it, and then they went to this one, post-tensioning it. That's a lot of play that they had to get down into this hole to do it. And if you recall, it's all our drawings we have are just, you know, we're just having fun speculating. But it appears that all the drawings on the line are just, just, they're not the as-builts. Here we go here. This is up here at this position along with this one. Now, these two are practically side by side. Now, forces are kind of, kind of, kind of a, uh, odd that way and I'm going to show you something here when the force when you create post tensioning imagine the force off this plate and when you imagine the force as this gets tighter you might imagine the force just coming down here and here the plate has its own force and that force will be in sort of this this angle here and on this one it would be sort of uh, on this angle here this path and you've got this plate it appears to be up high these guys cross together. Those two together up here, their forces would cross under post-tensioning. That would make an awesome point of a, a, a load path failure or, or a, a combined load path, uh, load path that would really have an impact at this location. D this one down here would then have its load path going this way and this way. And, and some of that might come across this post-tension member. This width is two foot. Maybe it would never make it. I, I don't know the calculations on that. But that's nevertheless, that's the way this path would go. And this one would be, you know, free, free to fly off to, uh, to nowhere land. And this one too, the load path would, would uh, you know, be somewhere near the bottom of this canopy. Maybe by the time it's dissipated. And then the same thing with this guy. It's going this direction near the top. But remember... This is not as everyone might be saying. Looks like both adjustments are done at the top of the bridge, uh, at the top of the canopy. And again, these are some serious plates. Uh, this appears to be the trumpet. I don't see so the uh, I don't see the plate behind it. I looked in the other videos. I, I didn't see this plate. I don't get it. I really don't get what's going on here. Uh, you know, no, nobody can besides the crew that was there. Now I need to make an, another adjustment. 
I think I uh, was saying that maybe the engineers should have been present. Well, they should have been, but I'm thinking they were not present. And that's because as I look at the crane, uh, not the crane, the basket that was there, the, uh, the man lift, the man lift was left after the accident. And it appears to be left in a high up position. So the engineers would have been stuck in the sky until forever, right? If they didn't just come down, lower the, lower the uh, man lift, and then take it back up into the sky empty. So perhaps it was just the two workers on top of this bridge without, well, maybe one of them's an engineer, right? Uh, so nevertheless, you know, you'd hope one of them was there, an engineer was there. And, and if not, then we do have just two workers going at post-tensioning, which is a, uh, okay, which is an amazing thing, right? Uh, what, what's, what, what certification do they have? And I don't know if they could certify them, even with certification doing this, could they, I just don't get them to be able to have the qualifications, even with the certification to do this. So here we have this. We have these two torn apart. We have uh, the load path issue of the uh, actual plates themselves, that they both were adjusted at the top, not one, not one bottom. They're not offset as far as this offset here. They're right side by side. Um, same thing with this, as we don't know the... Uh, we don't know how this is post tension, but these two, this one, this would cross, this load would wind up on top of this plate. This load would go this way. Let me get through that again. So it would come off. It would. It just looks like it's almost in line with this. The load on this one um, would be about like that. It'd be back on top of the plate, uh, which probably negates negates itself as being just part of a force, depending which one you're tensioning first. I guess you would tension uh, th uh, this one first and that one first and recheck. I don't know. I'm not going to bother myself, in other words, on that. But this is uh, questionable. All right, that's the end of this. And go ahead, troll away. I don't care about the other sites either. If you're going to talk to me about the other sites, uh, I'm just going to delete those posts. I don't care about uh, you, that those those sites. All right, well, 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 let's talk about this. This is this is a tension failure. At the the load was, it's like an overhang, a cantilever, if you will. That's a tension failure at the top. Tension failure also. All right, the uh, the bridge collapsing. Okay, uh, typically what a tension failure looks like. Um, let me clarify that. Take care, everybody.